Anorexia nervosa is a, an eating disorder that's characterized by an extreme restriction in food and a decrease in weight. Usually people with anorexia nervosa are 85% less or less of their normal weight and they also restrict food. But another characterization of anorexia nervosa is they have an intense fear of obesity and um, of gaining weight so they, they make all kinds of efforts to not eat food. In women too they stop menstruating. Uh, unfortunately in our culture there's a demand to be thin. We see it everywhere. We see it in the media, magazines and everywhere you go and you especially hear it on the schoolyard growing up so it's not just in one place it's everywhere and a lot of people especially women get it from their mothers or when they're little girls they get it from their mothers or perhaps sisters in the family. So there's a lot of demand to be thin and that your value as a human being is based on the fact that you're thin. I think this is especially interesting right now in our culture as people are getting a little bit larger in our society that there's even more of a demand to be thin on certain people. There are other factors too with eating disorders. There are um, there's genetic factors as well and psychological factors like basing your body image on your, your self-esteem on your body image. You know the greatest risk for developing a condition are women in general but especially women 15 to 19 years old. That adolescent range makes up approximately 40 percent of women who meet criteria for anorexia nervosa. Um, about 85 to 90 percent, maybe up to 95 percent, we're not exactly sure, but in that range of all uh, anorexia nervosa cases are women and about 5 to 15 percent of the cases are men. Uh, their desirable weight may not be a healthy weight. So if my desirable weight, let's say, as a human being, uh, let's say my healthy weight is to be 185, but my desirable weight is to be 145, well, I might be able to do that, but if my desirable weight then even slides down to 120, I'm in an extremely unhealthy range. So my healthy weight is really the, the factor we look at, and the desirable weight might be set much lower just because that's how they're basing their self-esteem. So one of the defining characteristics is a body dysmorphia or they, ha they look in at themselves and they actually see maybe a fat butt or fat thighs or maybe chubby cheeks um, and they look at those as body parts that are standing out but to you and I they look very emaciated. Uh, the consequences can be minor like dry brittle hair, brittle skin and, and sometimes in the women they have uh, a very thin appearance. Many, many women might actually appear more, uh, you actually look like a skeleton with, with skin covered and you might see white soft downy skin forming on the top um, of the skin. But, another, but then they can get much more serious such as stopping menstruating um, and then could get into a much more serious case than that where some people approximately 20 percent end up dying related to anorexia nervosa, that's up to 20 percent, um, about half those cases are thought to commit suicide um, and the other half from the effects of not eating and, coming and having other consequences. They're highly treatable. Um, there are many ways to treat eating disorders and that would be things such as medications, there are uh, individual psychotherapy and family therapy is especially important with anorexia nervosa. The problem with anorexia nervosa and other eating disorders is often those that have them aren't willing to accept that they have a problem and they often will kind of learn to pay lip service to the health professional and to their family just to get them off their back but will maintain the behavior the rest, rest of the time. So although the disorder is treatable, the person has to really want to be treated or it's, or it's going to fall flat. To find more information about anorexia nervosa, you should go to the National Eating Disorders Association website at nationaleatingdisorders.org. That's nationaleatingdisorders.org. And if you want for information about me, you can go to my website at www.drgreg.com.